Hello friends and welcome to our Good Friday Tenebrae service. For some of you, this might be an unfamiliar concept. Others of you may have grown up in a spiritual tradition where Tenebrae was an essential part of your Good Friday worship experience. Either way, tonight's service will likely have something new for everyone, and we are thrilled that you're here. Tonight's service is built around the Passion narrative as found in the Gospel of John. Tonight's readings will center on the last few hours of Christ's life. As we move through the story together, the candles will gradually be extinguished until we are sitting quietly in the dark, taking the opportunity to contemplate the profound weight of Jesus' suffering and sacrifice. In addition to the congregational singing, there will also be a few moments where we will ask you to participate with a brief response, sometimes as a full congregation and twice as the readers address you section by section. The readings, the visuals, the music, the sound effects, and the responses are all designed to help us engage with the passion experience a little more deeply and to perhaps identify ourselves within this story in a different way than we have before. At the end of the service, we ask that everyone please leave in a spirit of silent contemplation, saving those conversations for the lobby or the parking lot, or maybe even choosing to let the weight of the service stay with you in silence all the way home. Either way, we invite you now to lean in, listen, participate, engage your senses, and allow yourself to enter into this sacred time of worship with your whole self as we remember the sacrifice Christ made for us.
If heaven and hell decide that they both are satisfied and illuminate the nose on their vacancy side. If there's no one beside you when your soul embarks, then I'll follow you into the dark. Beloved, join me in our opening words. God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Jesus Christ. And this is judgment, that the light has come into the world. Welcome to the darkness The fear will let you in The root of all exclusion Who is out and who is in Systems of belonging We fear those who are different Refuse to see their pain In the heart of every man There's a song that love began Oh, love Oh, love Objectify the human With anger, fear, and shame Damn them with religion And never speak their name Comfort and pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this, your family, 
for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon a cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. After the supper, Jesus and his disciples went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all betray me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Peter said to him, Even if everyone else denies you, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of the disciples said the same. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew this place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priest and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. And when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. And again he asked them, whom, whom do you seek? And after they said, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which had been spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. And Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink from the cup which the Father has given me? You, you will all betray me. You, you will all betray me. You, you will all betray me. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authorities seized Jesus and bound him. First, they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jewish people come together. 
I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing in the courtyard warming himself by the fire. The woman who guarded the gate recognized him and said to Peter, Are not you also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. A little later, one of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. You, you were also a disciple of that man, Jesus. And you, you were also a disciple of that man, Jesus. You, you were also a disciple of that man, Jesus. darkness, through the fire, through my wicked heart's desire, your love remains, your love remains. Though I stumble, though I falter, through my weakness, you are strong, your love Oh, my. 
Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The religious authorities said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken, to show by what death he was to die. Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not 
of the world. Pilate said to him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went to the religious authorities again and told them, I find no crime in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a violent criminal. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities answered him, we have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was the more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate said, therefore, to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Upon this, Pilate sought to release him. But the religious authorities cried out, if you release this man, you are not 
Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, Behold, your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. They handed him over to them. He, the chief priest, received Jesus, and they took him to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. 
There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish chief priests then said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that now all was finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there. So they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the religious authorities asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness, 
his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth that you may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of his shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced.
After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but for the fear of religious authorities, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. So he came and he took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh, about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Friends, join me now in the benediction found on the screen as we say together, go in peace. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient to death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>